Hi everybody, Kono Pro coming at you with a video here, laminate floors. So these are the basic tools. This is actually, um, I call it a, a beater bar, pull bar, beater bar, that's a mallet. And this is like a beater block. I call them beater blocks. Um, you'll see what they're used for. Measuring tape, standard measuring tape, carpenter's pencil, and some shims. I like to have a couple different kinds of shims just in case. One of them's tapered and one of them has like a quarter inch with the eighth inch side. Okay, that's the under laminate that you install first. You roll that out, it comes in rolls and little ad adhesive strips. You roll that out, stick it together. Once you have that down, you're ready to rock. It's pretty self-explanatory, that under laminate. So what I do is I start with one piece first against the wall, start with the shim. And you put the shims there to give you, you know, you need like an eighth inch to a quarter inch gap away from the wall to allow your um, laminate floors to acclimate and breathe with the structure. And so what I'm pointing out now is that's the um, male side. I'm, t I'm pointing that against the wall. And then the female side is gonna point out towards the inside of the room. Now I'm locking this second one into that one. You lock it in first on the shorter side. Using my foot to hold it down. And then using, that's the beater block. It has a little notch on it that actually hooks on the laminate floor, which is super cool. And then you just um, give it a couple taps and it allows those seams to lock in together real nice. So then I follow, follow the same thing, throw a couple um, shims. I like to put a shim right in the middle of the seam once I have the first seam. Okay, now you'll notice too, uh, if the room is not square, once you put that shim on that seam, if you start to push in on your board and you, you notice the seam separating to keep the quarter inch reveal away from the wall, then you have to add a little bit more. But you don't want to have more than a 5 8 um, gap away from the wall because the baseboard won't cover bigger than that unless you add base shoe and extra work. So what I just did there was I showed how I trim the board. I rotate the board, basically flip it and cut the other side of it because that's the side that's going to go against the wall. The cut side goes against the wall. So once I mark it, I mark it and I give it about an eighth inch gap away from the wall, like my cut. So when I make that mark, I make it an eighth inch shorter than actually it is from the wall to the board. Make sure my saw, my saw blade is um, on the right side of the line when I make my cut. See how the cut side goes against the wall? That's how you do it. Kono Pro. So we put that cut side against the wall and then we allowed, like I say, about an eighth inch gap, quarter inch gap on my cut. So it gives me room to put that tool in there. You see that? This is what that, I call it the beater bar because you give it, you beat it in and then that allows it, that pulls it and you beat it and pull it in and it allows your seams to connect. And it's a universe, it's a really great tool, you'll see. And then we put another shim at that seam right there. And always follow the instructions too, if you want. You can watch my videos and then, um, you know, watch the, look at the, read the instructions on the laminate floor installation on the book and how they recommend it. And you can take what I say and what they say, and you might be able to just find some awesome way to do it. But this works great for me. So I start with my next piece. I staggered my joint. Okay, meaning that I started on the other side when I started installing my laminate. Now this side, I started on this side, on my right side. Okay, and then I make sure I put a shim against the wall. And then I tap that down tight against the shim. See, there's a gap there. I gotta make sure I keep that gap. So there's that shim I was just talking about. So we pop that in there, make sure that's tapped down tight. And so the shim is locked in there good. So we want it to be snug and tight, but we want it to have some room to breathe. So in case there is any movement in the building or anything like that at all, it'll be fine. Here's my next piece of laminate. So what we do is we lock in the long, the linear side first. We put it in on the angle and then lock it in and then drop it down flat against the wall. I am mean, a wall, <laughs> against the floor anyways. And then here's our beater block. We tap it down. We tap it into the long side first and then we tap, we tap it into our short side. Okay, it's a little hard to explain this, but you see how I have my foot down there? So I'm holding it with my foot and then I'm locking it in because you gotta make sure those lips and tongues and male and female, they, they tongue and groove together perfectly. 
So here's my next piece, my last piece for this little, for this side right here. We're gonna have to cut it at that tile, that little tile landing detail. So what we're gonna do is just, what I like to do is lock it in, actually lock in the short side. So I know it's not gonna go anywhere and that's gonna be exactly where it's gonna end up, the finished product's gonna be. And then I'll take my square and uh, give it a line. And that's gonna be my cut. Okay, here's the chop saw. I like to always have the, um, you know, the uh, male side against the guard so it doesn't slip underneath the guard. That's a chop, chop saw, compound miter chop saw we're using there. So here now our piece is in good. We're locking the long side first, locking and putting it on the angle. And you'll see the female side will be on the ground and then your male side will go in on the angle, drop it down and then it drops down to the floor. Okay, and then you give that a couple taps in to make sure that's secure and that seam is secure. Once that's done, see there's the notch on the back of the block that locks on perfect, right? With the lip of the laminate floor. And then you give it a couple blocks, make sure that seam is good. Tap it here, tap it there. Now we're gonna move that seam down and lock that seam in tight there. So that's what this beautiful bar is used again for. The beater bar, pull bar, universal bar. So there we are, we're, we're beating it down, you know, hitting a couple times with the mallet until that seam is locked in tight. Nice, that looks great. You see how that looks? And our, our seams are staggered. I like to keep a staggered minimum, you know, two feet, a foot. Okay, now what we're doing is we're getting ready to cut. Actually, we're actually, this is actually not, we're not getting ready to cut, we're cutting. This piece right here is gonna be, that's gonna be notching around the tile, okay? Um, we went ahead and fast forward a little bit through the, the footage and now we got to here. So this piece right here is what we notch around the tile. Okay, I'm clearing out some little areas, some old thin set that's there. Cleaning that out with an old chisel. Don't use a good chisel. You don't want to use a good chisel. That's an old chisel. So here's my notch. And basically how I got that was, um, you know, I used my speed square. I set the board up the same way I, I set the other side up to make the cut. And then I used my square to mark where that tile was. And then I measured how much was overlapping, two inches. So I cut off two inches with my skill saw. And I cut that off, locked it in, locked in my seam, and it's great. So here I am with this end piece here. Rotate it, if you rotate it, like I said, and then measure give it about an eighth inch gap. So instead of going real tight, you give it about an eighth inch gap, and then that's gonna be your cut side that's gonna go against the wall, okay? I like to use my speed square here, and um, you have a proper line to cut with. Okay, always use safety and protection, everybody, when you're rocking with the chop saw. All right, here's my piece. Remember, cut side towards the wall. That way you have a factory edge going against factory edge, which is tongue and groove against tongue and groove and you want them to lock in together. So now this piece, I'm gonna have to cut the same size. So I'm measuring that piece. It was, um, you know, five inches or what have you, six and an eighth or what have you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Make sure you cut the right side, okay? I still have the board rotated, so I'm gonna cut that side. I'm gonna cut off this small lip. Okay, you see how I just double checked my measurements? See, I pulled my measurement from the other side and I just double checked. And now I'm making sure that I have it on the right side. See, even me, a, per, a trained professional has been doing this for over 15 years and I still had to double check and I had to reverse the cut because I had it on the wrong side. You see that? So there's the right side to put it on. So now that I have it on the right side and you understand you have your, all your female side will be facing one way. So you want to cut off the male side, obviously, if that's the side facing the opposite direction you're going. So I'm using another board to scribe my line. I like to have a real nice dark line. That way I can see it with my skill saw. And then we're gonna take the skill saw and make another cut with that. Be careful when you're using um, the laminate and stuff like that as a scribe and stuff because the, the corners are delicate and you wanna be careful. So here's the skill saw. I have the blade depth set about three eighths of an inch. So that's about an eighth inch lower, you know, it goes past thicker than the actual board I'm cutting. So there it is, perfect. We lock that in, 
Great, you see how that's good? We got a good seam there, everything's good. That, that reveal on the tile there is great because we're putting a three inch threshold in the future there, so that gap is fine. So after we lock that in, everything's good, we're going on our next piece. We're gonna start our next run. Okay. Here we are, the same way we've been doing it. We put one on the uh, you know, shim at the end, lock it in to your, your linear side, your long side, and then uh, tap it down tight to your shim. Then we go with our next piece. Like I, you always wanna make sure your seams are staggered because if your seams are, seams are not staggered, if they're lined up together, all the, the smaller seams, if they all line up together in a room, if you walk in and all the seams line up, that's, that's really bad insulation. That means they don't know what they're doing and that's, that's structurally not sound. That's not the way you're supposed to do it because if, there, if one seam breaks, then it's gonna run down all of the seams and then it's gonna make that whole section crack and break. But if you have a, the joint staggered and one seam um, becomes broken or it gets faulty, it shouldn't transfer to the next seam because you have a solid board next to it. Okay, so always stagger your seams. Here we are, tapping in that, the long side first, using my foot to hold it down, tapping that side in. Great. Now we're gonna do a little piece. See how I didn't finish off that other side? That's because typically I like to do two to three rows um, in a row. So I'll start two or three rows and then I'll, when I have those three rows going to where, as far as they can go, see how I'm, now I'm matching the seam. I brought another piece up, brought it up, lined it up. It was about two foot in, brought it up next to that other seam, marked it, there's my cut. Okay, that's that piece to keep my seam consistent, two foot seam on that side. And then I always put my cut piece on the other side because you might use it. It might not be a trashed piece. Don't throw it away yet. So here's my, uh, basically my two foot beginner piece. This is, it, the seam comes out lined up with the other seam. And once you're doing this, You'll understand what I'm talking about. Tap that in. Tap this side in a little bit to the seam. Mm -hmm. Bring that in. You wanna make sure, like I was just saying, you wanna make sure there's expansion. That's why you have the seams there. So that way, the, if the building expands or moves, you have room, that's what these shims are for. They're for expansion. Floors and everything, they say they're engineered and they won't, they won't um, you know, acclimate, which is something that like basically dries, gets smaller and bigger, breathes, they call it, then um, you know, everything does. If it's wood, it's gonna acclimate. So we always leave room for stuff like that. Okay, got the next piece. I know it's sort of redundant everybody, but I'm just trying to you know, show you over and over again how to do it. So that way you feel comfortable and confident with um, doing it as you're doing it, running the seams and locking in the laminate. So see how I have, this was my second piece, my, my third piece in my second row that I haven't finished yet. And then typically I'll go through and just start my next, my next row without even finishing those three rows off. And it allows me to install the laminate floor faster, stagger my joints, make sure they're all, they all look good and staggered. See, now I'm gonna go ahead and um, make sure my seams are tight. And now we're, just like I said, gonna start with this piece here. So now we're gonna cut out the jam. I like to bring a piece of laminate floor, butt it up against the jam, use it as a, basically a template, as a guide, describe my pencil, because that's the height that we're gonna cut it. And then I, I use it as a, as a template to draw my line around the jam and around the casing, because we're gonna cut that out of there, so that way we can notch the laminate floor and it'll go underneath the casing, and then um, it looks like the, the flooring has been there forever. So this is a multi-purpose tool, amazing tool, it works magic, get it at your local hardware store. Once we cut all the way through, um, we use our chisel, wood chisel to get, get through the rest. Sometimes when you're cutting something, if it's on an angle, it'll start rubbing against some other wood and smoke, just like that was doing a little bit. So then we're gonna finish the cut with our chisel, so we did. Now we're completely notched below our casing and below our um, jam. So here's my piece that I'm actually gonna use. So what I'm doing with my pencil is I'm gonna scribe, I'm, I'm, I'm using the pencil to, basically I'm looking in about a quarter inch past the jam. That's where I marked. And then I measured there and that's how deep I make this notch here. So that reveal that was just there was two inches or three inches. 
That's how deep I make the notch. So I make it three inches because I butted it up to the wall. So what was left over was three inches. So then I use my square, I scribe that back, and I'm gonna be cutting off the right side, the side that's closest to me. And then I'm gonna leave that other two inch piece. And that's what I, when I bent down and used my pencil to draw a line a quarter inch underneath the jam, that's gonna slide right underneath the jam. And then that three inch piece is gonna be to uh, bring me up flush to the wall and allow that other piece to go underneath the jam which you'll see right here. Now I'm using a chop saw to do this technique, but you might want to use a skill saw or a jigsaw to do this, these kinds of cuts. I have many years experience and um, you know, I can do this, but I don't recommend everybody do everything that I do. If you feel like you're a professional and you can handle it, great, but always use safety. Um, goggles on, mask on when you're doing this kind of work. Like I, I recommend a skill saw or a jigsaw to do those cuts. But here we go. I slide in the long side first. And I basically bring it right up to where I want it to go. And then I lock it in. And then I'm going to use this speeder block to basically knock it all the way down those two or three inches to slide it underneath the jam and butt up against that wall. Make sure I have my shim there because I still want to have a gap for it to breathe. Great. You see how it slid underneath the jam and underneath the casing? And it looks like it was there before the jam and casing were installed. That's a good install. That's a proper install on laminate floors. And then you go back through and you um, caulk in that on the floor there and then you paint it and it looks like it's been there forever. So here's our lat next piece. Oh yeah, piece, pieces, more pieces, all these pieces. <laughs> You'll see I give a lot of thumbs up. I give a lot of basic leads and, and in this one, a lot of pieces and seams, mind you. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're rocking and rolling. We got another one we're doing here, another cut. All right. Whoa, I cut through like four right there. That's how we do it, Kono Pro. Basically, basically, we're going to need about four more pieces that are going to be two foot long. So I went ahead and took four boards, chopped them down four at a time. Let's get it done. If we can do it, let's do it. All right, here we go. Knocked in my long, locked in my long side first then um, locked in my short side into the wall with the seam for the, uh, excuse me, with the shim for the gap. And here's our next piece, long side in first. Make sure everything's locked in. Just pay attention to your seams. Seam, seam, seams. Uh, just look at them, look at them, make sure you do that and you're good. And once you start, like literally, you're halfway through, you'll be good. See how it's staggered? See how I got a good look that was staggered? Keep that going all the way through. Now we're here at the end of the wall here and um, there's an opening. So this door opening actually just had some tile installed and the thin set is coming out. So we're gonna trim that thin set with that multi-tool, make sure it has the right proper blade on it. They sell them with the multi-tool. And once that's done, we take our two foot piece cause we gotta keep our seam staggered. And then we notch basically there. I cut underneath the jam just like I did on the other jam. And then I made my notches just like I did on the other jam. And I'm, I'm cutting them out. Okay, and then that's gonna lock in. And you see that's gonna slide. It's gonna slide right in underneath that casing and that jam. But what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lock it in really tight against the wall. That way I can bring in my next piece and can have a little bit of play and when it has a little bit of play, I, it allow me to bring in the next piece underneath the jam and casing, and then I'll put that down, and then I can get my tool and pull it back, you'll see. So I put that shim there, but I barely, I use just a 16th and the reason so, so I can still get a tool in there. I don't want to damage the wall, trying to get my chisel or my pull bar or my pry bar in there, my beater bar. Okay, so here's my next piece bringing it up exactly where it's going to go. I, um, I scribe my line about a quarter inch back from the casing, just like on the other side. And then I, I measure from the wall to the laminate floor. Okay. And that's going to tell me whatever's left over. So I'll, I'll draw that line. So if that's six inches, then I'll measure six inches. I'll hook it like I'm doing here. I'll measure my six inches. I already have, that's my other scribe that I had from drawing the line for going underneath the jam and the casing. 
And I like to just draw a little curve in there, you know, just for visual because I know the casing has a curve in it. Okay, and then I measure six inches back on that, and then I scribe that line with a piece of board. And then, or a straight edge, a level, whatever you prefer. Take my skill saw, make my cut, watch your fingers, see how I'm folding my thumb in. Make sure you fold your thumb in when you're making cuts like this, because the saw can bind back and it will cut your thumb off, so be careful. So now that that piece is notched and cut and ready to go, I drop it down in there, just like so. See that? I lock it in nice and tight. You can use my, um, that beater bar. If you stick it on the seam on the back side, I'll show you here in a minute, and you turn it right or left, just like that, you turn it right or left, it'll put pressure against something and it'll lock in your, your seam. You'll see, that'll help a lot. So we got that linear seam locked in, now we just need that little seam locked in. So here's where we're gonna get in there with that beater, block, beater bar, and we're gonna smack that seam back in. But you gotta make sure you don't go too far because you don't want your cut to be revealed underneath the jam and the casing. You wanna keep your wood underneath there. See, your seam looks great, beautiful. Now we're gonna cut our next piece, just a six inch piece. You know, measure that. I like to go out 48 inches, whatever size my board is, and measure there too, because if the wall's on an angle, it might be six inches here, and it might be six and a quarter on the other side of your 48 inch piece. So make sure you just figure out your measurements for your piece, scribe it like I'm doing here with this board, which works great, by the way, but just be careful not to damage, because that's money. All right, use a skill saw. Give it a nice cut down that long line there. Like I say, watch your fingers, watch your hands. Watch what you're doing when you're doing stuff like this, please. Okay, here's that smaller piece, and we're basically gonna do it here, and then we're gonna do it at the end too, it's the small piece. We're just gonna follow suit with another little small piece, and it's gonna pop in there nice and easy all right so kono pro just really appreciate you all hope hope this helps you all you know see how i'm using that pry bar there turning to right and left and if you turn it right and left it'll lock in really good and then i took a little piece of laminate floor cut it and i made it a little beater block that can fit in there because my beater block is, is smaller than that there it is kono pro your laminate floor done ready to rock Hope you all enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it for you all. Please um, leave us a, uh, you know, uh, leave us a comment, give us a like, subscribe. We would really appreciate that and love it. Um, in the future, there'll be another one that um, is a complete new install of baseboards to show how we install baseboards on a laminate floor like that. But we do have another video already existing on Kono Pro that does show installation of damaged baseboards. And you can get the idea from that, how to install the baseboards. Okay, everybody, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Kono Pro out. Bye-bye.